The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we have all the markets starting off in the red this morning. We got a retail sales number out at 8.30. A little bit of weakness on the retail sales number, but the market's pretty much taken it in stride. We were already in negative territory coming into the open. We'll take a look at the S&Ps. Quite the day yesterday, you surge higher to 44.76. You're talking about 4,500 in play in the futures on the S&P. But overnight, you basically pull back right from the close of yesterday from 44.76. We make a low pre-market at about 3 a.m. of about 44.47. And zooming in on the action at 8.30, there's your volatility. But you're only talking about five or six points to the upside. Then back down to the downside. We're pretty much where we were prior to the retail sales number. We'll get into that in a moment. Why not jump over? The headline number was a 1.1% decrease in July, led by auto dealers and e-commerce. So that's the headline number. A little bit of a miss. Miss on the core number as well. We'll get into that. There's your tech stocks. Quite the resurgence yesterday. Talk about buying the dip. You end the day positive after trading from 15,100 down almost 200 points in the NASDAQ 100. You make a low at about 10.30 in the morning. You surge higher. Last night, though, right after 4 p.m., you trade a bit lower. We're down about two-thirds of a percent. Now, zooming in on the NASDAQ 100, you can see 8.30. There's your bar. We do have some volatility, but all things considered, not much action, really, taking that retail sales number in stride. Dow, a little bit of different action, quite the surge higher in the Dow yesterday. You trade from 35,150 up a solid 400 points almost by the end of the day, 35,548. But since then, we've given back 200 points. Now, the Dow did catch a bit on that retail sales number. We get some earnings out this morning as well. We got Walmart, we got Home Depot. That's contributing to some of the action. We'll jump over to those shortly. And there's your Russell. A little bit of different action in the Russell. The Russell trades lower yesterday. We get it back by the middle of the day, but you're talking about 40 points, give or take, that we were from where you were at two o'clock yesterday at 2210, even above that, really, 2212. You trade down to 2169.70. You actually catch a little bit of a bid as well in that retail sales number for the Russell. Jumping around to commodities, we got crude negative 34 cents. Check out the action in crude yesterday. You're talking about $2 down, $2 up. Pretty muted action on crude so far this morning. Gold continuing to climb. Let's back things up for 10 days to get the full picture on gold. You go from 1835, basically a couple weeks ago, you dive down a previous Sunday night to 1677, and then you're talking about upward territory. We're pushing almost 1800. This morning, you got to a price tag of 1797.60. Right now, you got gold up $2 at 1791. Bitcoin up $735, 46,830, and we jump to silver basically flat. Now check out silver, right? Silver, not quite regaining most of the loss as in gold. Gold, to recap again, you go from 1835 to 1677, we've almost gotten it all back. Silver, not quite the case. Silver, you're talking about you're still $2 and about 30 cents off of the highs we had a couple weeks ago at 2609. And notes and bonds, that's where we got a little bit of movement on the retail sales number. You're talking about lower price and higher yield. Now the 10-year right now is basically flat excuse me, we're talking about a yield right now of 1.25%. You put this thing on a 10-day, back it out, there we go. Uh, quite the drop and quite the reversal that we've had. You go from 135.14 down to a low about a week ago last Wednesday, 133.09. That was correlating to a yield, I think, of 1.38, 1.35. You were talking about pushing 1.4, just like that. We're back to one and a quarter percent on the 10-year, and we jump over to the volatility index. We finally got some negative action in this market, but we had it yesterday as well, and you saw what happened to the VIX. Did we get a 15 handle? Not quite. We got to a low of 1602 before things got elevated again, but we're not even back to where we were at the beginning of trading yesterday. Okay, let's jump into that retail sales number. There we go. 
Drop in retail sales indicates shift to service spending. That's how Bloomberg puts it. Let's get into the numbers. You got a 1.1% pullback in July. Not surprising that it's led by auto dealers. E-commerce throw, throwing in there. Uh, receipts at restaurants, bars increased, but at a slower pace. Now, when you look at it, I mean, a declining number was expected. OK, but retail sales fell in July, showing consumers are shifting expenses. Something to consider here is that all of the talk of the Delta variant and cases persisting really taken hold over the last two or three weeks, I would say. People coming to the realization that we are deep in another spike. Can't deny it if you're living in Florida, the numbers, but across the country, uh, just coming kind of to that realization. Point being, these numbers for July, OK, if these numbers for July are tough, Potentially, you could see some tough numbers for August as we come into school openings and Delta variant in cases and hospitalizations, unfortunately, and deaths surging. Uh, that could be an ominous sign for some of those numbers coming up when you see the miss that they had. Now, I'm going to jump over to the CNBC article that they have, excluding automobiles. Sales declined 0.4 percent, according to the Commerce Department. Uh, consumers make up 70 percent of all U.S. activity they talk about in here through July Though July saw a month-over-month -month decline, the $617.7 billion in sales still represents a 15.8% acceleration from the same time a year ago. Don't be confused by those numbers, folks. It does not matter what is happening right now compared to a year ago, because a year ago, we lived in a world that hopefully we're not living in again, even though cases are persisting. And unfortunately, people are not taking the vaccine when they're given the option which is why we're now dealing with hospitalizations that are spiking, which is the real worry. That leads to death, even if it doesn't, okay? We're getting to the point in hospitalizations, and unfortunately, people being turned away. I'm starting to hear some really tough stories in Florida in terms of people needing surgeries that are deemed elective. But folks, elective surgeries are not like a cosmetic surgery. Elective surgeries can be many, many surgeries that basically would be something that you would consider um, a requirement. People dealing with whether it's breast cancer, needing treatment for that, surgeries for that. That's the ones that I've heard, friends of friends. Um, very unfortunate that hospitalizations have to stop all of those because they just don't have the space. Uh, so comparing it to a year ago, not really that important. Most of the monthly decline, here we go, came from motor vehicles and parts dealers, which fell 3.9%. Auto sector, of course, been a major contributor. Clothing saw a 2.6% decline. Not what you wanted to see coming back to school. Um, something to think about in terms of clothing. We're coming up towards the end of the stimulus, right? People got stimulus, maybe they spent it, maybe that's why we had the surges early. Maybe that money's kind of spent, and maybe just people kind of shop for what they need. Maybe back to school is not quite the season it might be. We're coming into August, but I tell you, in Florida, this is the second week the kids have been back already. I know we start a lot sooner than most of the rest of the country in the Northeast. I think you start right beginning of September. Um, but nonetheless, you have sporting goods, musical instruments, and bookstores fell 1.9%. Online sales posted a 3 0.1% drop. So the market takes those numbers. They take it in stride. It's a weak number, though, and it's a weak number for the month of July when things were much more promising, I would say, than they are August 17th. Uh, Hillsborough School District, folks, Tampa Bay, okay, they got an emergency meeting for their school board tomorrow, Wednesday, because they have something like 5,600 kids already in quarantine and 350 teachers in quarantine, and they're trying to figure out how to operate uh, in this environment. Kids got to get back to school. But I think the only way to do it, folks, is safely. That's why this conversation gets so heated, because everybody wants the kids back in school. Um, and with cases persisting, especially the way they are in Florida right now, Hillsboro, they're bananas. I'm not in Hillsboro right now. Uh, I have a couple homes. One is there. But that's a tough number when you got almost 6,000 kids four days into the school year practically being quarantined. Tough numbers. We'll see how they shake out. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, we'll take a look at Walmart, Home Depot. We'll get ready for the open. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free 
All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets in negative territory. S and P's down about 26 points right now. You get the Dow down about 231, trading 35,303. Taking a look at a couple of the companies out with their numbers uh, this morning. You got Walmart out with their numbers. Pretty tame reaction so far. You had a deceleration in their online sales growth, uh, which is interesting. When we're going to take a look at the retail sales number, you saw a decline of greater than 3% online transactions, uh, maybe hinting to some of that. A little bit of a slowdown, but Walmart, they crushed it for same-store sales. Uh, forecast, they guided up as well. Walmart's been in quite a rocket ship recently. You put this thing on a daily. We do have Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. You just traded from 135 to 150, so a lot of optimism priced into that equity, and when you're within a about 25 cents of where we closed at yesterday for Walmart shares. After trading down to 149, we're going to open basically right where we closed at yesterday. Jumping over to Home Depot out with their numbers as well. When we get Target and Lowe's later this week as well. You got Home Depot, though, trading lower. There's your action on their earnings. You spike from 334 down to 318. We're sitting at 322 right now. Again, back to the daily. This thing has been on quite a run as well. Lofty expectations. You were coming in almost right to all-time highs. There's your action on Home Depot, 345.69. We're about 10 bucks from that level last night, but you're down about 4%, about $12. They're trading lower Home Depot shares uh, and seeing where we're at. So you're trading at 323 right now. You take this whole run it had since March. Up to the all-time highs we had since 345, the 382, about a $308 price tag. We almost ran it right back to that 50% retracement back in June. That number from Home Depot, 296, uh, not out of the question. When you're down $12 right now to 322, that you're only talking about $25, $26 from where we're trading at right now. Now jumping around to get their numbers, we'll start it off with Walmart. All right, let's get into the numbers. Here we go. There we go. Dollar seventy-eight versus dollar fifty-seven. Quite a beat on revenue when you're talking about basically almost four billion dollars in ninety days of extra revenue. One hundred and forty-one billion versus one hundred and thirty-seven point one seven. Second quarters, each fiscal year showing on the darker side, one than five percent same store sales growth uh they did decelerate though when you're talking about the e-commerce sales there's the chart there a little bit of a deceleration had the market a little worried probably by walmart why walmart is trading about flat right now on the open all right folks let's jump over to our man kevin hinks every trading day 11 a.m eastern time live on tiger tv td td ameritrade network fast market with kevin hinks alex coffee and the team breaking down the market action 
walking you through hypothetical trades. We got a nice week of retail earnings coming up. We got retail sales today. Kevin Higgs, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How we doing? You know, a, a number coming out right now, Tommy. Industrial production, a nice little beat here. We've got uh, industrial production month over month. They were looking for up 0.4, came in up 0.9. Manufacturing, looking for up 0.5, came in up 1.4. And capacity, capacity utilization rate, 76.1. So a beat across the board in industrial production. So that's pretty good numbers, you know. Uh, retail sales were a miss, Tommy, but you're seeing a little softening in, in the down move in futures, mainly because this number was made up of motor vehicle sales down 3.9%, another an expected weakness in, uh, in autos. So that number kind of being uh, discounted as the size of the myth that we saw, Tommy. Yeah, it is interesting. Quite a miss when you just look at the headline number. Maybe a decrease of 1.1% versus, was it 0.3 or 0.4, Kevin, I believe, something like that, looking for a decrease. Um, but the market was already in negative territory. So, yeah, we're down 26 points right now. Uh, but coming into that number, I mean, you're talking about quite a tight little trading range, um, of about five points, give or take, in the S&P on that volatility on the retail sales number. We got Walmart out with their numbers, Kevin. Decent numbers. Uh, they beat on revenue. They have a little bit of a miss in terms of their online sales growth, maybe giving the investors a little bit of a pause. Home Depot, all things considered, pretty decent numbers, but uh, the market has some lofty expectations for some of these companies right now. Interesting when you look at, Kevin, the retail sales number as they come out with Walmart, um, the declining number of online sales. Do you take anything away from there? Because Walmart decelerated, and they're, of course, trying to get into e-commerce and still growing dramatically. These public companies, you know, a deceleration of growth just means they're still growing, just not at the rate that maybe they were. Uh, but Walmart, a little bit of a miss there. Retail sales, also a little bit of a miss on the online sales. You looking at that at all this morning? Yeah, here, here's the problem. No, oh, absolutely. Am I looking at it? I look at everything. The the top from last year, remember, last year at this time, e-commerce sales at Walmart of 96%. So Crazy. this comp being anywhere close to that is probably still a good, strong number. So people frustrated about that should probably, uh, you know, temper their their disappointment because the, the comparable is to a year ago and so the year ago was so strong in the middle of the pandemic with e-commerce so walmart's only down you know 50 60 cents so that, that's yeah. actually a pretty strong move for them tommy it it is remarkable man i mean we're, we're business owners tfnn of course and if you ever were just growing at those types of rate i mean they're still growing right yeah. it's just they're not growing at the rate you want i mean they're just growing dramatically in e-commerce they beat by revenue by four billion dollars now we have walmart in my newsletter i'm a little bit biased here kevin but we have it for a reason they beat by four billion dollars on revenue in 90 days man um so not 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 that bad for 90 days to beat on that revenue uh so we got the retail sales kevin we got some retail numbers we still got some retail numbers coming up later this week what are you guys going to be talking about coming up in an hour and a half at 11 o'clock today on fast market well today it'll be a good one because we get target lowe's and uh tjx today so it's uh, still all retail uh kind of spreading it out a little bit of apparel a little bit of home improvements and a little bit of big box today and i love how it's always you know Walmart and Target, right? Home Depot and Lowe's, so comparable, yet definitely their own entities and how they're serving their customer and how their customer bases might differ a little bit. Uh, and you got both of those stocks obviously reacting to their competitors. We got Lowe's this morning from 193, you're down a bit to 187 and jumping around to Target. Target right now down about $2. But the market is weak as well. So, of course, you're going to have a little negative action. Target, man, this stock, I can't wait to see how you guys cover it. Uh, from You're talking about under $100 last year, folks. You're at 263 I had a channel line on this thing, Kevin. It is above that channel line now at 263 You got an all-time high at 267 made just last week. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the conversation, man. We look forward to the show as always. We'll be watching at 11 o'clock today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. My pleasure. You too, Kevin. Folks, tune in. Outstanding program. Uh, I know I talk about it every day. I talk to Kevin Hanks Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I try and schedule my day to watch that program. I try and watch them all. But the way they break down options, especially during our earnings season, I would check it out if you get the chance. Excuse me. Okay, jumping around to what else we got going on. Let's jump through. I was going to do, we did Walmart numbers. 
So there is what we talked about there. Uh, E-commerce sales growth waning a bit. Same store sales for Sam's Club increasing 7.7%, more than the 37 markets we're looking for. Big numbers there. Uh, highest quarterly revenue ever for a three-month period outside of a holiday season on Walmart. Revenue rising by 2.4% to 141% billion dollars as we mentioned the number that they were looking for was 137.17 there but the e-commerce sales that's really the only negative on there and as kevin was saying there's your 97 percent growth from a year ago as you're comping against that number uh tough to replicate something like that on an ongoing basis uh and we'll see how they open though we've got walmart and we will break down home depot numbers as well because walmart basically about flat right now stay tuned folks we're going to come back in about three minutes we'll come back for the market open i'll be right back Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we're pulling back a bit right now. You got the S&Ps. Zoom back out. Where are we? We're trading at 44.43 right now. Where's my print on that? Let me put that 15 minute. For some reason, there we go. There's the bar. I couldn't quite see it. 44.43, a little bit of negative action on the open right now. You get the Dow down almost 300 points. There's your action on the Dow, 35,243 right now. Russell down 25 points, not quite below where we were at pre-market though. And you get the NASDAQ 100 
not sure what's going on with my charts right now. Is the right bar not quite showing up? <clears throat> Until I zoom in, 14,990, you get tech stocks. NASDAQ 100 dropping. We're negative by about a percent right now. Bitcoin positive by 400. One of the few things I have green on my chart. Gold barely hanging on to gains by about 70 cents to 1790 this morning. We jumped to notes and bonds. Talk about a little bit of a pullback right now. 134.08, you're negative by about two ticks in the 10-year. We take a look at the VIX as this market trades lower on the open. 1756 right now. Okay, jumping around to what else we were talking about here. So we talked about Walmart. Let's get into Home Depot now. Home Depot shares tumble despite earnings beat. Retailer rang up fewer customers as do-it-yourself trends weaken. Home Depot same-store sales slightly short of estimates. Now, Walmart crushed it on same-store sales. Home Improvement Chain reported a 5.8% drop in customer transactions from a year earlier. Average ticket, though, 11.3% larger. Interesting how that diverges, right? Less people in the door, but of those people, they're all spending a little bit more money. And 11.3% is not just a little. When you look at an average ticket, is 11.3% larger. Uh, how about no outlook for the full year? Folks, I understand why things are in flux, but we are at a point that these executives are being paid riches in the tune of, as we all know, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars to manage these public companies, and they don't want to give you an outlook. They should be paying a penalty for that. Okay, during the beginning of COVID, um, I I remember talking about that any executive that was not pulling their guidance was just not maximizing their benefit right then. You were paying no price by pulling your guidance because everybody understood that guidance is out the window right now. Nobody really understood where it was going last year. There are enough bright people, folks, to at least be able to model where we're going to be. Now, you're making guesses like you always are, and those guesses are a little bit more volatile and a little less uninformed. There's just variables that you can't quite quantify in the way we're used to. But nonetheless, there's a lot of bright people when you're getting paid tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. They should be providing an outlook. Every company should be providing an outlook that I'd be owning right now. Um, when do you think about it? Getting into the numbers, they beat by about nine cents, 453 versus 444. Revenue beats as well, but barely. You're talking about 300 million. Pretty remarkable. And 300 million over 90 days is barely a beat, but it is. For the three months, net income, 4.81 billion uh, from 4.33 a year earlier. Market was looking for 444. Revenue climbed 8.1% from a year earlier. And again, year earlier, for a company like Home Depot, uh, they weren't paying the price as much. People were really taking advantage of that time to improve their homes. Total same-store sales, 4.5% for Home Depot, short of the more than 5% growth anticipated. 5.8% drop in customer transactions, as I said earlier, 11.3% larger. Sales per retail square foot grew 5.3% year over year, 663 dollars and five pennies uh home improvement was a big covid winner and home depot performed massively through the crisis this is an oppenheimer senior analyst talking about but i've got to believe that as the economy opens up as people start to move around again there's going to be less of a focus on spending on the home and that's why we're seeing these numbers now so you have home depot let's see how we're trading on the open whoops hd yeah, pretty much where we were pre-market. You're down about 3.5% for Home Depot shares. We jump over to Walmart shares. Walmart basically off slightly. You're down about four-tenths percent for Walmart on their numbers. All right. And, yeah, they're talking about Sam's Club in the uh, YouTube Tigers den out there. I agree. My, my, my household has a Sam's Club membership. Stock up on the essentials every two weeks. It's a way to do it, folks, if you can. You know, the simple stuff, right? Paper towels, water, toilet paper, uh, non-perishables. It's a great deal, um, but they have a little bit of improvement to go, and that's why you saw Walmart paying the price, as I talked about on my show, I think, yesterday. The process they have, even at a company like Walmart, the size they are, and through Sam's, there's been many times that uh, the, the process and the delivery and the service and the ability to go into an order, maybe how it shows up. I'll tell you a quick story, okay? Sam's Club. We're talking about three, four, five months ago at this point, placing orders. I order paper plates, all right, a big, you know, what's it, probably a 100 pack of uh, those Chinette, kind of the nicer paper disposable plates, right, cardboard plates almost. Um, they show up the first time in a box, as is the case, right? All of the items show up in a box. They're shipped to you. And uh, I could tell the package was just dirty. It didn't make sense. It was dirty. And I'm talking about plates you're going to eat off, right? So I call them. I say... Yeah, you know, the, the plates are dirty. I don't know what happened. They say, okay, we can refund them or send it back out. I say, send it back out. Send a new one. That works. About four or five days later, 
kid you not, all right? Now, there were a couple items that were there that I had to get resent. The, the plates show up literally in a plastic bag that they're in, so no box whatsoever, placed on my front door. It's just like an item from the supermarket that they literally just took and put on my front door. And it was dirty as could be. And there was a hole in the bag. That stuff just does not happen at Amazon. I, I remember, I, my mind was blown. How does that happen? So number one, you have this product that makes it out of the warehouse. My guess was, is that somehow that fell out of the box that they delivered to my house. The driver went back through, they saw the item, they said, whose item could this be? They went through the possible deliveries. They realized it was probably my item. They came back to the house and they dropped it off on the front door. Uh, a horrible failure in terms of process on many aspects. The bag, it looked like it was bouncing around the, the truck the whole time. It was dark, it was black, it was kicked, it was holes in it. These are paper plates. And, and the delivery driver just literally drops it off at my front door and rings the bell. They have a long way to go on some of those where that is just on, that would never happen on Amazon. And somehow, they've had a lot of problems. Now, Sam's is great, but they have a lot of work to do. So, you know, we own Walmart in my newsletter, but my spikes are up on my back, folks, because they are not competing where they need to be with Amazon yet when it comes to online deliveries. We actually ordered a Walmart pickup in my household just this past weekend. It was not a great experience. Uh, we thought it was gonna be free. We got the, to the end of it, it was $35 plus the order. I don't think we're Walmart Plus. Nonetheless, it was an $8 delivery fee. You have to tip the driver $5, which is fine, but you're talking about $8 plus $5. That's $13 added on. Uh, you have to select a window. It's not same day delivery. So they have a long way to go. Um, they do, but long, what? market's liking it though. We're slipping into the positive right now. Walmart up about 3 tenths percent. Let's jump over to Home Depot. And kind of the trend uh, staying, as in Walmart was pre-market in the negative. They're continuing in the red, down 4.4% for Home Depot. And we have Walmart in the positive. Now, Target shares down 1.76%, probably having to do with the likes of Walmart seeing their e-commerce sales declining, I'm guessing. You jump over to Lowe's, they're paying the price probably because of that transactions, right? You're talking about much less transactions for a company like Home Depot, that's likely to contribute to the Lowe's numbers that we'll see coming up as well. All right, let's jump over to these two stocks. So we got markets open. We're talking about, they're out with their numbers tomorrow. I believe it's pre-market. You're talking about $8 move right now, priced into the stock for uh, Lowe's, coming up with their numbers. We jump over to Target shares. Target, you're talking about an $11.64 move, $257 stock, and TJX, TJ Maxx we get as well. Talking about $2.58 move, TJ Maxx right now, you're trading down 1.4% in the retail trend as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back right after the break. We've got a lot to talk about. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&P negative by 25 points. We'll see where the day goes. Yesterday, we had negative action as well, and the markets resurged higher by the close at 4 p.m. Uh, we'll see this morning a little bit of weakness on the retail sales number from the month of July. Not a great sign, too, when you think about Delta variant really taking hold late July to early August, at least where most of the country became aware that another wave may be coming that could impact actual behavior. It's impacting us in Florida, folks, I'll tell you, in a big way. You're talking about back-to-school shopping. We got a lot to worry about in Florida, let alone back-to-school shopping. Now, you get into what we have going on here. I'm going to walk you through real quick, okay? Uh, you got Hillsborough County, number one, Tampa. I believe that's the seventh largest uh, school district, potentially, in the, the country. Four days in, basically, of where we are. We started Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe, last week. I think it was Tuesday. Uh, as of 7 a.m., you're talking about this is yesterday morning, I believe. Uh, no, yes, 7 a.m. Monday. 5,600 students and 316 employees in Hillsborough County Public Schools currently in isolation or quarantine. Um, that's for either you could test positive or those who have had close contact. They have a special meeting going on tomorrow night just to figure out how they keep schools open. Uh, as you have thousands and thousands of cases. Now I'm in Polk County. We have one of our kids starting pre-K this year, four years old. Uh, they go to an elementary school. You already got calls going home that they got COVID cases in there. Now here's where I'm gonna go with this, all right? DeSantis, very uh, divisive figure, we'll put it, in terms of politics in Florida. Now he is out here, folks, talking about Regeneron, okay? I'm going to pull up DeSantis' Twitter feed, okay, because it's important to understand the context of what's going on here, okay? All of this new talk on his Twitter feed is talking about monoclonal antibody treatment, setting up sites for this. I really wish he would be stressing vaccinations, folks, because that's how you're going to keep people out of hospitalizations, which is the most important part here, okay? Yes, there are breakthrough cases that do happen when you're vaccinated, but a vast majority of the people clogging up the hospitals right now, okay, which is resulting in elective surgeries not being able to be done, are unvaccinated people. We all know how DeSantis feels about that, okay? He's spending his time plotting with his legal team how to resist vaccine mandates by private companies doing business in Florida at the same time he's out there touting the monoclonal antibody treatment okay now where is this treatment from this treatment is from a company called Regeneron okay you pull up Regeneron and they have had quite a run they're having quite a run today and up another two percent you take a look at the daily since about March okay when it looked like we might get over this thing if people took their vaccines Regeneron was at 441 well, since then, you've risen up to 640, okay? Who is one of the largest owners of Regeneron? One of the largest owners of Regeneron is Kenneth Griffin of Citadel. And who is DeSantis's largest contributor? Ken Griffin, 
okay, who gave $5 million to DeSantis's PAC in April. Where were we in April? We were trading about $480, okay? So he loves the idea, Ken Griffin, that you don't have to talk about vaccines, just use Regeneron's monoclonal antibody treatment to treat everybody that gets it. It's a shame, folks. It's, it's just horrible to see that $5 million gets given and you scroll to DeSantis's feed, folks, it is all about these things, talking about it, all right? Yeah, you have a little bit of storm in there as well. Okay, all of these tweets, nothing about vaccines. It's embarrassing the way it's getting handled, all right? We got my kids at risk, we got everybody's kids at risk, all right? And schools ain't gonna be able to stay open if you got mandates with no masks at a time you get thousands of kids. And the 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 conflict of interest to have the, the largest contributor to DeSantis, a huge owner of Regeneron, a huge owner of that, pushing this, it's, it's a bummer, folks, all right? His whole feed here is talking about monoclonal antibodies, setting it up. Uh, we need to get vaccinated. That's how you get over this thing, okay? And it's a real bummer that he's taking five million bucks from Ken Griffin and touting this thing all over the state now as like this is gonna be the cure and the end all. It's not the case, folks. Wake up and pay attention. It's embarrassing. There's the work, there's the math, follow the money as usual you follow the money it goes right back to the biggest contributor to desantis who is the second largest older owner of regeneron and that stock just went from 480 bucks to 640 bucks as you have the governor of florida around the state touting treatments as opposed to touting vaccinations it's a bummer there's no way around it numbers in hillsborough county folks i mean it's just no denying it's remarkable all right jumping back to the markets let's see what we got what we got going on uh we'll jump to some of the stocks that we have in terms of coming up with their earnings we talked about target shares pulling back 1.9 percent right now 257 dollars let's jump around to some of the fang stocks this morning you got amazon shares down about three quarters percent amazon quite the trade yesterday down almost 100 bucks and gets it all back by the close apple was making new highs yesterday apple look at that resurgence we closed the day at about 151.12 today, we're up about 20 cents at 151.30. You're up a size 151.70. Remarkable that Apple continues to make new all-time highs, even in the face of some weakness in some of the tech stocks, right? There's your daily on Apple. I mean, compare that to some of the strongest companies out there. Microsoft, same deal. All-time highs yesterday on Microsoft as the FAG stocks continue to carry some of the market. Google shares just off the highs. You're talking about $29 off the all-time highs for a stock trading at 27 Hundred dollars. We jumped to Facebook shares, three hundred and sixty-four bucks. They traded lower on their earnings last week. We just kind of been sputtering around, basically near all-time highs outside of a few days on some of those equities. And let's take a look at gold because gold's been a little bit of a winner recently. Gold, from the depths that we were at. Now here's the interesting thing, right? I talked about it originally. Gold. You back things up to where we were in gold here. March thirtieth, you're trading at a price tag of sixteen seventy-eight thirty, sixteen seventy-seven thirty. What did we hit last Sunday night, folks? 1677.90. Within one dollar, we get to both of the, the the previous low in March, and within about four dollars from that low in March earlier in the month. Maybe that's where we had to test, folks, to take out maybe the stops. We basically come right down that level, and since then, it's all been upward action. You're trading at 1793. Put gold on a three-year weekly. You see where we're at. Still in a downward trend, though. We got to break above it. Um, you know, when I look at the trend line, you take an easy spot from the top line there to the bottom line, and that's gonna line up pretty well outside of a little bit of an outlier maybe, but if I'm looking for a little linear regression potentially, you know, it's an art, not a science, folks. You know, you're supposed to line up consecutive points for a trend, of course, but uh, that's a downward channel line. And wherever you pot, pot it, you know, you could pot it right there, matching up these, maybe you get a little bit below that line briefly. Nonetheless, you see, we're in the middle of the trading range and uh, you're a solid, what, 200, almost $300 off the highs we had last August? Now, jumping to notes and bonds, which is obviously going to play into the gold, they've been holding up well. There's your three-year weekly. We run from 117.35 in October of 2018. We make a high during the depths of COVID of 140.24. You pull back to an exact 382. You chop around at that 382 price tag from March 1st all the way to the end of June, and then we accelerate higher, and we'll see. Um, now, you could make the case, same case in terms of this downtrend. We're bumping up against that trend line. Not sure where the bottom part with that would be, but interesting that all of those peaks lining up to kind of where we are right now on that tenure, maybe that provides a little bit of resistance potentially uh, as the market. Not quite sure where rates gonna end up uh, as the economy marches on.
All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps down 26 points. We'll take a look at the other companies we got coming up earnings later in the week. Uh, Dow off 274 right now, Russell off 21, and we got crude just sitting negative by 10 cents at 67.19. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back after the break in three minutes. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of bionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets dropping a bit. We got the S&Ps down 33 points. You get the Dow down 300 points. S&Ps right now, not quite to the lowest we had yesterday. You're within about nine points of that point. That would be a critical area, folks. 44.30, you're talking about right near the lowest we had Monday, also correlating to the lowest we had on Thursday. You jump to the Dow. We're about the lows on yesterday in the Dow. About 100 points from where we're trading at right now. 35,146. NASDAQ 100 just off that level as well by about 60 points. So all the market's not even back to the lows of yesterday yet. Things look pretty dicey on the board, but we weren't even uh, we're above where we're at basically yesterday at this time. So keep that in context, folks. Uh, you jump to other stocks as I talked about with earnings this week. We got Cisco. 
and NVIDIA out on Wednesday. So today we're talking about Lowe's, Target, TJ Maxx, right? We had Walmart and Home Depot. You get Cisco and NVIDIA jumping over to those two. Cisco, you're looking at about a 5% pop on their numbers, just under that price tag, $2.31 move. NVIDIA should be an interesting one as well. Now, NVIDIA out with their numbers tomorrow as well. You're talking about more than a 5% move on NVIDIA. You take a look at this equity. We're down about 2.1% right now. But we just traded from 140 back on their prior earnings. You would come into the last quarter at a price tag of 157. We were just above 200 yesterday. So you're talking about pushing all-time highs right now the upper boundary line. Uh, we're trading at 195. They're out with their numbers tomorrow as well. All right, folks, what else we got going on this week? Now, Larry Pesimento, he will be doing his show today live at noon Eastern time. We got Fast Market at 11 o'clock, of course. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. On Thursday, Larry Pesavento ain't going to be doing his show, folks, because he's going to be doing a live trading webinar for five hours, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time. He'll take a couple breaks in there. Um, five hours, 9 till 2, live trading webinar, trade what you see, a live trading event. And he's going to talk about, folks, methodology while he's in there trading. How to use ABCs. ABCDs to build an expectation for the next sequence of moves, talking about risk management with those formations, uh, patterns he uses, three patterns that help identify shifts in supply and demand, trend changes, uh, simple tools to help you find an edge. All of that's going to be covered, folks. You get a month of his newsletter as well, $295, and that will be archived. You can watch it as many times as you like on your member page uh, at TFNN. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Starting your day, we got markets in red territory. Should be an interesting one out there. Stay tuned. Basil coming up. Fast market at 11. Larry Pesavento, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien's back this afternoon. Thanks, folks. Be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.